Miles ready? Ready to move? All right. Come on, Moise. Come on. New grass. Come on. Come on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on. Come on, Moise. Come on. Oh, yeah. New paddock. Hey, big guy. Hey, big guy. How's the eats, huh? How's the eats? Oh, yeah, look at that clover. Oh, bam. Oh, good stuff. Good stuff. That good stuff, Mui. Good afternoon, Jason here, Birchfield Family Farm. We've got a lot going on today with our flock of St. Croix sheep. Uh, lots, to, lots to do, we're at weaning time. So I'd like to, like to take you along for that process, show you what we've got going on and uh, see if we can't get, get some of these mamas back out on pasture. So we don't normally keep our St. Croix in the barn, but we are in the process of weaning. We weaned yesterday, our lambs here, and uh, we have buyers, buyers coming uh, to purchase. So we had to get these guys weaned. Uh, we do take weaning weights. Uh, this time of year is, is kind of it's kind of hairy, lots to do with our, our sheep because, you know, we have the, uh, the rams, the rams are separated right now out on pasture because we don't, don't want them breeding and, uh, and then having to wean lambs and separate you. So that kind of creates three different groups of animals. And anytime you've got a different group, you know, there's always, you know, uh, separate waters and all that kind of stuff. So it creates more work, but uh, everybody's pretty noisy here because of the weaning. But uh, we've discovered this is, this is something that, that has to be done in order to get these guys sold in 90 days. So there's something called fence line weaning uh, that you can, you can do with cattle and with sheep, probably really any type of animal you're, you're weaning. Hi, honey. Hi. Um, <clears throat> but that just involves, instead of completely visually separating the animals at weaning, you can physically separate them, but allow them to still see each other. And this is, we found this has been much less stressful on the animals. We have a gate over there and mamas and uh, lambs can see each other through through that gate so you know i think it it's a little less uh stress on the animals when we when we wean this way but uh i'm gonna get these ewes out of here get them get them back on pasture for a while let's go let's go come on all the way out let's go oh i know I know. It's no fun. I know. I know. I know.
You know, one of the big names out there popularizing St. Croix is, of course, Greg Judy. Uh, and I think he's done a lot for the breed. Uh, we've been raising St. Croix now on our farm for uh, just over three years and have had pretty good luck. i uh, like to talk some uh, about what's worked and what hasn't. So why keep St. Croix sheep? I think for us, it has a lot to do with the efficient conversion of something we as humans can eat grass uh, into meat, they make milk, and they make more babies, which I think is absolutely amazing off of grass alone. One of the other reasons we chose St. Croix uh, for our farm is they're a hair breed of sheep, which means there's no shearing. So no shearing a sheep, they, they lose their hair uh, almost like a dog. Um, you know, in the spring, I notice they, they put on their hair uh, in the fall uh, and have a really thick coat through the winter, but then in the spring, um, they actually lose that hair. It's, it's kind of funny. Uh, in some of our beehives that don't make it, I've actually found uh, just the clumps of, of St. Croix hair, right, that, that fall out. The, the mice get it, and they crawl in the abandoned beehives, and uh, we find the, find the hair in there. Evidently, pretty good bedding for the mice through the winter. So St. Croix is a smaller framed sheep. Uh, you're, you're not gonna get the meat yields off of St. Croix that you would off of like a commercial sheep, like a Dorper. Uh, however, that being said, what you give up uh, in carcass size, typically they say uh, you gain back in parasite resistance, things of that sort. I will say this, uh, it, it does not mean uh, that you, you won't have problems, uh, especially at that weaning age. Um, I know with our stock here this year, we, we had trouble, uh, just be flat out honest. Uh, it was right at that 65 day old age. And I think the sheep are, they're, you know, the lambs are trying to come into their own in terms of a, a parasite resistance, uh, fighting off coccidia, that, that sort of thing. And uh, it gets dicey right around that 60 to 80 day old uh, time frame. We, we actually lost a, a few sheep this year, but we did, uh, I think, kind of had a, a perfect storm in terms of environment as well. Uh, and I'll certainly be watching for this in the future. But right at that 60 day age, uh, we had very, very dry conditions, very hot, uh, over 100 degrees heat index. And then we got like almost an inch of rain, like nine tenths of rain came all at one time. Uh, and it was shortly after that, you know, within a week after that, that we really, really started having some issues with a few of the, a few of the, the lambs. Um, so, but once you get past that four to, to six week, or four, I'm sorry, four to six month age uh, on the on the Saint Croix, we have not had issues. Uh, no deworming for us, you know. After that age, uh, they're able to to really fend for themselves. Um, so again, smaller carcass, uh, but there are there are benefits uh, in in terms of parasite resistance. I was pretty happy with these guys and, and wean weights uh, this year. On average, we average just over forty five pounds uh, per per lamb <clears throat> on the weaning weights, and that was at ninety days. That's one hundred percent grass fed, no grain. <laughs> So I was I was pretty happy uh, with that with that wean weight number. Saint Croix sheep have been an awesome fit for us. Uh, been a total total blessing in terms of being a small farm, uh, having a, an all grass fed ruminant animal that's going to take that grass and convert it into a usable protein for us, uh, like me. Um, but I will say they, they don't come problem free. You know, every farm is unique. Every farm has a unique, uh, climate with unique challenges and, and every farm you have to work through these things and you have to, to learn. And there's a, a learning curve in the beginning. I think, um, you know, for us, it's that weaning age, you know, if we can get, uh, through that weaning age and get the animals functional on their own, um, you know, that's our, that's our challenge here. Um, I think, you know, my, my issue is with some of these seasoned 
guys that want to talk about St. Croix as a bulletproof breed as if uh you know even if you're you know you're doing it all grass like you kind of talk about it like you're not going to have any problems whatsoever it's not that these guys i don't think are are being deceptive or, or trying to hide things it's just that they've been doing it for so long that they they called in the beginning right they they uh you know kind of worked out their kinks early on and now you you just don't see a whole lot of that when they're when they're talking about the breed um, and so I, uh, I would definitely, would definitely do this over again, uh, if we had to, but, uh, we are, uh, enjoying this breed. They are a fit for our, our small, uh, grass farm. And, uh, if you have questions or comments, uh, leave them down below. Thanks for watching.